This week on Thinking Outside the Blocks, we're joined by Lamont Moses, better known as Chef Smiley, owner and founder of Happy Face Catering. Chef Smiley is known for his outrageous flavors, diversified menus, and unique style of presentation. He's catered for many celebrities like Jimmy Rollins, Donovan McNabb, Michael Jordan, and many more. Join us as Chef Smiley gives us his recipe for success. Now, Chef, honestly, I wish we could do a little bit more eating than talking. Yeah. <laughs> but for our viewers, can you tell us what we got going on here? Well, right now, we got the grilled asparagus and the uh, Moscato cream sauce. We got the green bean medley. We got the uh, glazed plantains up here and the Jamaican rum sauce. And we got the grilled fish and the white wine sauce, sweet and spicy garlic parmesan wings. Just a grub session, that's all it is. And then we're gonna have the grilled pineapple, grilled uh, cantaloupe, and grilled watermelon with the balsamic vinegar with the cream, uh, with the whipped cream uh, drizzled on top for dessert as well too. So everything is coming fresh off the grill. I specialize in grilled uh, foods, uh, smoked meats, mm. and all that. We also have in a raspberry jalapeno uh, grilled chicken as well. So one of the things that I do being a caterer, I always try to make things convenient and uh, put everything on trays ready to roll to the table. Now from what I understand, you actually tailor your menu to your client. Exactly. A lot of people don't do that. Uh, how do you go about doing that? Well, that's you, wonderful. you got to have customer diversity service. and that's one of the things that, why they call me the infusion man because I infuse different cultures and spices. I can accommodate a lot of different ethnics of people from Caribbean, Hawaiian, Asian, Italian, Seoul. You know, it's just so many different things that I can do. Right. Right. And this is a, a natural, a grave nectar. We basically drizzle when it's ready for the uh, plantains, which is now. And it is sugar free, I believe. Yes, this is, no, this is a natural sugar. Natural so sugar, okay, that's important. It's sweetener, but it's a natural sugar. Okay. So those are all the uh, good things. And nothing like grilling off the fire because you get it, you and, and uh, you enhance the flame. The flame enhances the flavor of the food. Okay. You kind of left that one on there too long. Okay. But um, we got the grilled fish coming off, sweet and spicy garlic parmesan wow. wings, and then right over here, got the smoked raspberry jalapeno chicken. Wow. About to jump off. Mm, so I think I'll be you just take a look myself. at that. It's nice and tender. Every piece is the same. There ain't no difference. I ain't grabbing no special ones. Okay. Every piece is the same. So that's how we come when we come. And uh. I have a lot of trophies for my smoked uh, meats. Uh, I specialize in smoked meats. Uh, this particular meat was smoked over applewood. And I use the woods for the different flavors. So uh, I use hickory, I use apple, and I use cherry. Uh, this particular uh, meat was smoked over the applewood. Now, we know you got a lot of fans out there. And I've even heard people refer to you as caterer to the stars. How did that come about? Is that word of mouth? How do you get so popular with a lot of the celebrities? I know you do a lot of events with celebrities and personalities. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, uh, actually, like some of my first celebrities was like Music Soul Child, more like the entertainment, the rappers and stuff like that. And then I uh, did a job for Jimmy Rollins uh, in, the, okay. in the, a music studio, and he got me into the Philly, so I got a five-game contract. And that turned into a 55-game contract for the year. Wow. So I went from the Phillies to the Eagles. I uh, got some of the Sixers players. Uh, I don't have no flyers, so I'm, I'm rooting for okay. the flyers. We're working on the flyers. <laughs> yeah, we're Fly working on the flyers. Get at them. Holler at them. Get at me. ShefSmiley.com. But um, one of the things that I pride myself on is, is that, you know, uh, a lot of the jobs that I get from them are on short notice. Okay. So I, I even had, like, one-day notices where I actually produce 180 uh, people, you know. So, but it, then again, the check is there, too. So I don't mind stepping right. up to the plate to get that right. green, you know. Right, right. So uh, the infusion is basically different cultures, spices, uh, styles of cooking. It's not just the grill, uh, deep frying, uh, gr you know, grilling, smoking. Uh, and a lot of times people are so used to one kind of food. You know, they go to catering events and they're so right. used to the antipastas and, right. you know, the sandwiches and stuff like that. And I bring that different element. And uh, as you see, we kind of just whipped all this up in like 45 to 50 right. minutes. I'm and everything is almost ready to roll, right. you know. Right. So that's where we at. But, in, you know, as far as the entrepreneur, I always try to find new innovative ways, innovative okay. ways to be uh, uh, a trendsetter. You know, it's important to be a trendsetter because if you're above you know, what's going on, people are not really grasping it, but they're still grooving with it, you know what I'm saying? Right. Like the mango vinaigrette salad is, right. you know, with the fruit in it, kind of comes in at a whole nother angle. You know, right. we made, we took the same mangoes, 
uh, salsa and made the uh, mango vinaigrette Cajun uh, dressing and uh, put the strawberries in there and made a, right. a really nice summery fresh salad right. and stuff like that. And that's, that's the stuff that I like to be different and stand right. out about. Now you mentioned that you had an event uh, with about 180 people. That's mm -hmm. a very large event. Correct. Now people see Chef Smiley, they mm -hmm. see Happy Face Catering, they mm -hmm. see the brand, they see you as the face mm -hmm. of the organization. Mm -hmm. Can you talk a little bit about what goes on behind the scenes? Because you can't pull off a 180 person event well, with just yourself. I, correct, and I have, a, I have my staff on speed dial. When I get events like that, I have an arsenal of 25 to 30 people that I text out one time, and whoever's available, they already know the routine, they know the drill. Either you're available or you're not. I don't need no stories. Okay. Either you're available or you're not. This is the time, this is the place, can you be there? And that's how we execute uh, really quick, really fast on a short notice because okay. if you can't make it, that's fine. We just move on to the next. Okay. You know, so a lot of times, some people can't make it, so that's fine. I don't have no, I, you know, I don't hold no grudges or nothing like that because okay. short notice is short notice, but right. they also get paid for short notice. So that's one of the things that actually, I feel like I'm in my best element when I'm right. against the gun like that. Okay. But see, you know, so I got to figure out what I got, what what can I make in six hours to be at his house? Right. For uh, actually, his his event was like 40 people. Right. So I did a lot of grilled foods, cut them up, uh, quick beans, okay. uh, rice, stuff like that. Nothing that would take long. <clears throat> and everything was off the grill as, as opposed to smoking that would take a couple hours. Okay. So. Being quick on your feet is one, and that's what one of the things I designed the grub sessions for. Okay. Because was, I put myself in training to be on the Food Network, which is a uh, chop. So I keep doing these grub sessions on short notice, and now right. I got to go to the supermarket, I got to figure out what I'm going right. to make. So it's all, it's, it's like my way of training myself to be right. a quick thinker. Right. You know? Now, in, in terms of traveling, are you just focused on dominating this area because you pretty much have this area locked down? Or, or will you go No, I abroad? actually travel all over. Right now I'm working on a, a proposal for a soul food restaurant in Miami South Beach, which is actually, wow. I'm going to infuse a Latin and Caribbean vibe into. And one of the things that uh, they wanted me to bring was just different element, you know? And that's like, I designed like uh, fish and grits in a martini glass with a champagne cheese sauce. Okay. You know what I'm saying? That'd be an all day dish. You can have that any time of the day, but it's actually a Southern treat. Okay. You know, the fish and grits is real big in the South. So that's some of the dishes that I'm bringing. We'll be right back with more Chef Smiley. See you in a few. We would like to take a moment to recognize the contribution of Local 542 for providing opportunities for working men and women in the building and construction industry and educating workers on the benefits of union membership and collective bargaining for better work conditions. Now I can see there's a lot of work that goes into what you do. Mm -hmm. What gives you that drive? What keeps you going every morning when you wake up to be the best you can be? Well, I always said to myself a long time ago, you only get what you put in. And if you ain't in pursuit of something, you get nothing. So, you know, I know if I don't put the work in, then I ain't gonna get it. And in order to be good at what you do, you have to apply yourself daily, you know. Mm -hmm. Everywhere I go, I'm always thinking food. I'm always, you know, right. I'm, uh, food context and my conversation. Right. And, you know, they say, Dan, you, what you do, dream about food? Actually, right. I do. This is what right. I do because right. my life is all about food and food is all about my life, and they right. both are interfused right. in, into each right. other. So as a result of that, this is what I do on a daily basis, whether I'm just home chilling, cooking with my daughter, or I'm not doing a, a, you know, a job for the celebrities. Right. Either way, it's all about the cooking. Right. Now, in terms of marketing yourself and building your brand, I noticed that you use social media to yes. your advantage, uh, Facebook and so forth. How's that working out for you? Well, actually, that's extremely well because I get 425 visitors average a month to my website where I get 3,000 visitors just on my Chef Smiley page per day. Because okay. as a fan page, Chef's, uh, Facebook allows you to get do the stats. Okay. So I'm doing, actually, I was just on there the other day, I got 249,000 people since wow. January the 1st. Wow. Just reviewed my page, and that's okay. only my Chef Smiley page where I actually get more uh, traffic to my Lamont and Future Man page. Right. So what I do is I produce recipes on there daily. I talk food talk. I got on my Chef Smiley page, I got kitchen talk. I got okay. relationship recipes. Uh, okay. I got things that's not just incorporated with food, but right. see recipes 
is can be used in anything is, is all about yeah. the ingredients. You know, right. ingredients is your character. Yeah. So Indeed. again, I can resort that to life. You know what I'm saying? Right. So it goes back to right. not just the food, but the right. recipe. So I'm still right. talking food in right. a sense, right. but I'm talking about life now. Right. So it's still a lot of times people say, damn, chef, do you like ever stop? Right. <laughs> so, right. and that's the thing. They, I'm right. marketing myself and they is indirectly right. marketing myself right. through them by talking about stuff right. like that. Right. You know, because kitchen talk is like what we're doing now. It's kitchen right. talk. You know exactly. what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And it could be about relationships. It could be about food, it can be about a one-on-one -on -one date, it can be about any of those things. Okay. Now, I notice you do a lot of events. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's almost like a big presentation. It's almost like a concert. Mm -hmm. You know, as a chef, not many people do that. So right. I just want to commend you on branding yourself and doing something different and mm -hmm. thinking outside the blocks. Right. Uh, what are you looking to do different this coming year? Or you have any plans to work with some new people? Or? Well, the plan that I got in the making is the uh, proposal that I'm working on for the uh, uh, Maserati Club uh, oh, okay. in the uh, in South Beach, which is, is is a soul food based club, but I'm giving it a Latin Caribbean twist. Okay. So um, that's the stuff that I'm coming up with, designing like you know the uh, Latins eat the uh, whole red snapper deep fried. Right. I'm kind of coming at it the same way, but slightly right. a little bit different with a little vibe of the soul. Or instead of the red sauce, I'm gonna do a pineapple jerk sauce mm -hmm. over top of the fish. So I got a couple things in the making with that, and, uh, and they're actually uh, really excited about me coming down. So I got to okay. win, win the proposal first. Right. right. Okay. Yeah. Now everything is not easy. It's mm -hmm. not the way they see it all the time. It's a lot of hard work. We mentioned that. Mm -hmm. What challenges as an entrepreneur have you had to o overcome to build your Chef Smiley brand? Well. One of the things that I'm challenged in now is is, is the economy. You know, I was okay. I, my business was based on dealing with a lot of companies, and I had a lot of accounts where a lot of companies are not outsourcing their money anymore. The second challenge that I had, uh, another portion of my business was through the uh, ball players, okay. right? So I had you know Javon Kurz, uh, Lito Shepard, Donovan McNabb. So okay. we talking you know, $72,000 in revenue lost in the last year and a half. So now I have to redirect myself on how I'm marketing myself back into the mainstream because okay. they are no longer in the city right. and, and, and that part is kind of dead. So now I'm remarketing myself back out to Facebook for weddings, you know, small parties, stuff like that to, to get back in the, in the flow. Okay. And then you eventually work yourself into getting contracts, maybe even a TV show, stuff like okay. that. Now we know cooking is your talent. We mm -hmm. know that's like you do it with your eyes closed. Mm -hmm. At what point did you know you know what, I can turn this into a business. What was the catalyst? What was the breaking point when you said, you know what, I need to blow this up? Well, I actually used to buy houses, fix them up, and sell them. I started out as a carpenter. Okay. I had a carpentry business the at the age of 17. Uh -huh. So by the time I was 22, I bought and sold four houses. But after yeah. each house that I would buy, I would have these parties. And everybody's like, yo, no, I'm, I'm wanting everybody to come in and see the glazed brick walls, the recessed right. lights. Right. They're like, yo, who cooked the meatballs? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, yo. So right. it was like, oh man, ain't nobody even paid attention to my crib. Okay. So I kept having these parties and it got to a point where like the party was like, I'm doing 2700 off the parties right. and I was only going to charge seven, $800 for the house. Right. <laughs> so I said, I might as well just have one party per month and, and, and max it out like that. So I did right. that for a year. And, you know, I, I, I pulled in some serious money uh, doing that and then actually went partnership on the club. I did okay. that and that's how, that was uh, um, when two unique gentlemen and company and we, we was throwing parties and then I was the caterer. Okay. And then that went into Happy Face Caterer. Okay. Well, you're so. definitely, definitely an inspiration for a lot of our viewers out there. Mm -hmm. Any advice that you have that you could tell somebody that's thinking about going into business? Well, one of the things that I would say to anybody out there is be true to yourself. You know, if you don't believe in yourself and you don't wake up and, and, and pay homage to yourself then you'll never get where you want to be you can't wake up and just say I want to be a star I want to be successful you got to work for it you know and one of my models is you know you only get what you pursue in life so if you ain't in pursuit then don't expect to get it and that would be my main thing it don't matter whether you're selling peanuts selling papers you just right. got to be passionate about what you do right. right you know and be willing to you know go over and beyond and not be the the the, the masses you got to try to be be different so that you stand out I got you. you know what I'm saying and that's what entrepreneurs are about absolutely you know being different you know because if we were templated we had started a hot dog stand or we had started something that was already templated for right. us to do you know right. you can easily go in and get a reader's water ice and that's why they sell these franchises because right. it's templated for you to come in and do the exact same thing right but I don't want to be amongst the masses I want to be right. different I want to be right. unique I want to be eccentric right. and that's what the infusion is about well, it's definitely important to set yourself apart uh, that's why we call our show thinking outside the blocks and you've definitely done that yes Chef, 
this is a question that's been on my mind since we started. <laughs> uh huh. You mind if I uh, get a little, little, little sample of this? Yeah, beer? ain't nothing like a sample. We're How gonna set, set you up with the sweet, spicy garlic parmesan wings. Wow. This is a homemade sauce, one of my sauces. Wow. I can't get a recipe out because I haven't marketed it yet. But we let you be the judge. You know, it's smoked first and then the sauce right on. That's why it's called Happy Face. That's, that's why right. it's called Happy Face. That's right. <laughs> You know what? It's just smiling, thinking outside the blocks, and we'll be right back. Oh yeah. <laughs> Up next, more thinking outside the blocks with Cameron Washington. Our next guest, many refer to as a Renaissance man. He is Cameron Washington lifestyle expert, brand consultant, event planner, and much more. Join us as Cameron shows us how to live life with style and detail. Motion is big nowadays. It's a way for businesses, especially new businesses, to piggyback off the energy of a lot of already successful businesses. Can we talk about that a little bit? Absolutely. Um, I definitely think that that is one of the main ways that any business will be successful is you have to uh, think of ways to connect with companies that already have a very strong following or have tapped into a way to really market a successful um, business or enterprise. Uh, so I really think the first thing is to network. That's the only way you're going to meet people and to be able to connect with them. And you have to have a clear understanding of what it is you can offer their demographic in order to make these connections. It has to be a win-win. Um, but I definitely think cross-promoting in any way is going to escalate your clientele or your business because you're going to be able to reach people that maybe you normally wouldn't have. But because you have this connection to other businesses and that tie-in, it's going to allow them to feel comfortable with you as a brand. Okay, that, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, as a fashion consultant, uh, does that give you access to, to clothing lines uh, before it gets out to the public? Absolutely. Um, a lot of times it does give us definitely great access, um, not even just before it comes out to the public, but period. Some things that may never come out to the public, they may be exclusive pieces. Um, definitely, and again, it goes back to um, cross-promotion and reaching out to people and being able to network so that you can say, you know, let me uh, give me access to this new collection or this brand so that you know I can put it on this person that is a public figure or maybe seen in a magazine which again not only brings recognition to you as a stylist but to the designer as well so of course there are definitely a lot of perks and benefits to it okay I'm sure uh, we've heard the cliche clothes do make a man mm -hmm. okay as far as your position what you want to convey uh, as far as your professionalism can we talk a little bit about clothes as almost a costume or a way of having nonverbal communication? Sure, absolutely. Um, one of my biggest things is I think people see you before they hear you. And before you can even open your mouth, just by looking at you, people are already making up a, a perception of you in their mind. A lot of times, I think you, you know, the phrase, don't judge a book by its cover, um, but a lot of times, the cover is what's going to make you right. want to read that book. And so it is important that before they get to know you, before they know your story, that they're able to look at you and, and to some extent, be able to tell what type of person you are. So absolutely, um, clothing plays a very, not just clothing, but just grooming, period. Um, your, your exterior, it plays a very important part uh, in telling people who you are and telling the story of what it is that you want to do. Um, if that wasn't the case, then we would dress any way we wanted to for interviews. We wouldn't have to come in suits or uh, for church or for anything. Uh, but those things are set in place because, again, just the mind of a, of a human being, by looking at someone, you all automatically begin to put um, a, a picture in your mind or a perception of them. Okay, now, interior design, that is a part of your offering which you offer some of your clients. Mm -hmm. Uh, now, when I was growing up, I always thought a nice house was a big house. Uh, but as I got older and matured a little bit, I understood that it's not just about square footage. It's Sorry. about how you lay it out. Mm -hmm. It's about uh, your furniture, your choices of your colors, your different materials. Uh, can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, absolutely. That's really the key to it. It's not about, it's about doing what you can with the space that you have. 
in any space. I mean, I've walked into houses that are, are large, but because the decor wasn't right, you didn't get that feeling. Home should feel like home. It should bring a euphoric feeling when you walk in the door because that's the place where you can escape from work, where you can escape from everything that's going on outside. So it is important, colors. Colors, we don't realize, but in everything, in clothing and in home decor, colors play a lot um, in the way that we feel and how comfortable we may feel. Uh, when you walk into a room that has earth tones and dark oranges or browns, you automatically feel relaxed and calm and neutral. If you walk into a room that has bright orange paint, you're gonna feel excited or vibrant. So it is absolutely not about the space you have, but it's what you do with that space and realizing that you can do it on a budget. Um, it's very simple. It's just a matter of um, having a clear idea and a clear concept of what it is that you want it to look like and how you want it to make you feel. Okay. Now, out of everything that you do offer, uh, what are you most passionate about? Is it fashion? Uh, is it the interior design, promotions? <laughs> if you can narrow it down. That's a hard question, um, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say that I'm not even, I'm most passionate about building my brand, period. Um, about finding a way that I can not only offer one service, but I could come to you and say, you know what, I've styled you, but let's talk about your home. How's your home? Now, many of us heard the cliche before, clothes do make a man. Mm -hmm. And I look at clothes as sort of a costume, so to speak, or a form of nonverbal communication right. to convey whatever kind of look, whether it's professional or casual. Uh, can you talk a little bit about that? Uh, I definitely think that clothes make a man or a woman. Um, because I feel, you know, we, we say a lot in the phrase, don't judge a book by its cover. But really, the cover is what's going to excite you to read the book. Um, so it is definitely, people see you before they hear you. So before you even open your mouth, before you've had a chance to introduce yourself, people have already made up in their mind, whether they realize it or not, what they think of you based upon what they see. Uh, if that's the case, then we wouldn't have to dress professionally in any atmosphere, whether it be an interview or a party or uh, even funerals or church. There have been these uh, criteria or the criteria that we have for how we need to look and present ourselves based upon the setting we're in. So it absolutely is uh, a fact that clothes do make us, whether we want to agree with it or not, um, it's there for a purpose and we have transitioned in our mind and we have this mindset that what we see is what we feel we're going to get. And so, you know, of course, sometimes we are surprised because we can't judge a book by its cover all the time. But in most cases, what you see is a reflection of how that person feels. You can tell when somebody's down or upset based upon how they're dressed. You can tell if someone is motivated or excited or going to a business meeting based upon what you see. So I totally agree with that, that clothes do make a man. Now, out of everything that you do, and you do various different things for your clients, what is your passion? Like, What, what, what do you like the best to do out of everything? You know, that's a, a hard question to ask, and I get asked that question a lot. Uh, but my passion is being able to offer life services. And when I say that, I mean being able to bring in a client and not just offer them fashion consulting, but being able to totally be active in all of their life. So if it's planning their birthday party or their wedding, I'm planning their birthday party and wedding, but I'm also styling them for it. And after they're married, they're going to need someone to come in and set up their house for them and give them home decor. So it's really about going from not just one particular service, but being passionate to being able to really transform and transition somebody's life to be everything that they need, again, from their clothing to how they feel, to their home, to their event, or even branding themselves personally or in business. So my passion is really being able to take in a client and be consistently with them, them in any part of their life. Okay. I'd like to talk a little bit about your book. Okay. Uh, what I liked about the book personally is that it gave the common person the impression that they didn't have to be a wealthy uh, mm -hmm. superstar or, right. or, or celebrity to live a, a nice lifestyle. Absolutely. Can you talk a little bit about your book? That's really the concept behind the book. Um, realizing, uh, I talk in the first chapter in the introduction that that's where I found myself. Uh, back a few years, I was you know, upset or depressed because I felt like I had so much I wanted to do. I wanted to live a certain life. I wanted my home to look a certain way. I wanted to be successful, but I realized that I didn't always have the resources based upon what I saw on TV or in magazines to make me feel like I would achieve that. And so I had to make a decision. I could either stay upset or I could use what I had around me, use the resources I had, and use the talents I had to bring what I thought would be a happiness, successful life to myself. 
I mean, that's really what I talk about through the book. And I use my personal experiences in each of the chapters to show you that, you know, you may not be the Kardashians or you may not be Beyonce and Jay-Z, but there's something that you have inside of you. There's something that is around you wherever you are that you can live a life of style and detail. And that's the mantra behind the book is live your life with style and detail, whether you're in a studio apartment or whether you're in a six bedroom house. Anything that you can do to bring euphoria, to bring excitement, to bring style and detail, use what's around you and make the best of it. Okay. For those of us in the audience that are looking to start their own business, do you have any advice that you can give them? Make sure you have a clear concept of what you want to do. Make sure that you understand what it is you can do and what you can offer uh, because there's nothing worse than uh, being in a position where you present to be able to give whatever you can give and say the sky's the limit but when you have those clients that approach you you're not able to deliver uh, one bad client is more than you should ever have because that one person knows six or seven other people uh, that they're, and they're going to spread the word um, especially now with the websites and the um, uh, sites where you can go on and post comments, you know, any bad experience that you give a client could potentially ruin your business. So I would definitely say be consistent, make sure you have a clear idea of what you can deliver because if not, you'll continue to spin your wheels. People want to feel secure when they come to you. They want to know that you are the end all be all for them. That once they found you, that they can entrust you with whatever service you're providing them um, outside of event planning, whatever it is. If you're a housekeeper or if you have a cleaning service, then you need to be the best housekeeping and cleaning service that there is. And consistency. People want to know that when they need you, they can find you and that every time they come to you, you present the same service. And I really think that's what people are looking for now in businesses is they want to feel like um, that once they find you, that you are what they need and they can continue to go to you. They want to have an ongoing relationship. Right. But definitely being the best uh, is the message that we're hearing. Definitely. Absolutely. Now, if I can just say, hypothetically, I'm your client and I'm looking for uh, fashion consultant. Okay. okay. What uh, what style would you go with with me, or what do you think? Well, what's your style? Well, tell me what you have and what you have in mind. Well, I was thinking something along the lines of the Black James Bond. <laughs> James Bond. 